as you represent. Uh, if you're from this church in this area, if you're from some other uh, province here in Canada, if you're from the States, Ireland, whatever the case may be, I think I'm talking to people. Look, man, I'm talking to people who carry a King James Bible and show up for church on Thursday night. I think that's pretty good. And give me a lot of money. Right? Anyway. <clears throat> back to being in church on Thursday night. But, but I'm talking to people. Look, I am talking to people. I believe your desire is to serve God. Your desire is to glorify Him with your life. And yet I am talking to very good people. And somewhere in this mansion of your heart, there is one door. That you keep locked. There is one door off in a corner that you kind of put up curtains to cover it. And when God walks through the hallways, you as do you ever do you ever have somebody you know you had something over here hidden and and, it was, and you didn't want them to see. And as they turned that way, you went, "Oh, did you see that over there? Look, look at that plane on the wall." And you go, "Yeah, yeah." And you, and you just got them past that. And whenever God gets anywhere near that door, you start whistling on the other side. Well, well, yeah, God, how you doing? This boy, it's really great to have you here, God. I'm really glad you're here. There's just something, and I'm not talking about sin, by the way. I'm not talking about some secret sin that, you know, you're diabolical and you're hypocritical. And I'm talking that you got something that you want to keep for yourself. Come on. Would a father be wrong to want to keep his son? Huh? That's not sin. It's not sin that a father would say, I'd rather not, I'd rather not kill my son. You know, it, but God didn't ask his opinion. That's how you can tell God's not an American. <clears throat> First off, I want you to think of what Isaac represented here to Abraham, not to you and me, not, not to my prophetic references. I'm talking to Abraham. He was indeed the child of promise, was he not? I mean, this was the kid that was promised in Genesis chapter 15. And when, and when, when Isaac was born, and, and Isaac was born through, not through God, but through manipulation and, uh, and, and, uh, and listening to the guy's wife. Right? Take that for what it's worth, guys. And sorry, lady, but that's how it worked out. But, um, uh, and didn't even say, he said, oh, man, God. He said, I wish that Isaac would live before you. Or I, uh, Ishmael. I keep saying Isaac, don't I? My wife's back there crying, I can tell. I knew I was saying something wrong. Ishmael, Ishmael. Isaac's the son of promise. Ishmael's the, the one that's not a son of promise. If you're listening to this tape right now, get it right. <clears throat> but Ishmael was not the child of promise. Isaac was the child of promise. So what was the promise? A guy who had no children and who had really given up. And the Bible describes, God described, the Bible described Abraham with a phrase that is used to this day. And him as good as dead. That's what it says. And him as good as dead. And you ever, you ever say that? Oh man, he's as good as dead. Watch well, from a King James Bible. And God said, this child, I'm going to give you a child. And you know what this child's going to do? This child's going to give you so many kids. It's going to be like the sand of the sea, like the stars of the sky. And Abraham said, I believe that. Man, that's an amazing thing. You know who was happy when Abraham said that? So I'll bet Abraham was oh, not near as happy as God was. I mean, can you imagine how God must have felt for one of those dirt balls to actually take him at his word and go, whoa, whoa, did you hear that? He really thinks I'm going to do that. I mean, I am, but he actually believes it. Come on, look at some of your prayers. Remember the word provide? Didn't he say he'd provide for you? Then how come some of your prayers have been God provide for me? Didn't he already say he was going to? Then why are you telling him to? Because you think he wasn't going to do it. If he said he's going to do it, trust me, trust me, the hamburger will be there. Maybe not the quiche. <clears throat> not if God provides. I was in a missionary's house one morning. I walked out to the kitchen. The missionary's wife said, and Brother Gip, what would you like with your quiche? And I said, I'd like two eggs and bacon with my quiche. <clears throat> And that's what I got. I mean, if them poor little eggs gotta, gotta die for something, I wanna recognize them. <clears throat> you, know what, you know what Isaac represented? Isaac represented the hope for the future. How many kids did Isaac have right now? None. Isaac had none, wasn't even married. But he was the hope for the future. Um, my dad, had two sons. 
both of us, last name, Gip. Well, really, you know, I mean, you've got families now where you've got five boys and they all got a different last name. And, and we were both Gips, and my dad wanted somebody to carry on the family name, Gip. Uh, October 23rd, 1975, there was a motorcycle accident. My brother, two years older than me, was killed. Now there's a, you know what my dad called me that night? He was weeping. He said, you're the only son I got. You know what he was saying? I want that name to continue. And, and that day I became my father's hope for the future. <clears throat> my wife and I had three boys. I always say this. I had three boys. She had four. You can figure that out later. <laughs> <clears throat> and, um, and so uh, you say, well, there's three gifts. And, and um, we've got, uh, we've got uh, two of them married, one of them, only one of them. Uh, um, Nathan has two girls, and we like girls, but I don't think their husbands are going to change their last name to Gip when they get married. And right now, Nathan and Rose are expecting another child in, in October. <clears throat> Isn't it amazing how, how we've become accustomed when you hear somebody saying they're having a baby, and, and somebody says, what are they having? You remember when you found out the day it happened? I mean, we, listen, things have changed, has it not? A, a guy said something to me a year ago at a conference. He, he, he put some words into a sentence that couldn't have been a sentence 10 years ago. He said, can I take your picture? I said, sure. He said, uh, I forgot my camera. I have to use my phone. <laughs> Do you know that if somebody said that in 1967, they would end up in an insane asylum? <laughs> hey, Jerry there thinks he's going to take pictures with a phone. I mean, it better be close. He's only got a five-foot cord on it. <laughs> How are you taking the pic? Here, smile. Should I look into the earpiece or the mouthpiece? You see what I'm saying? And now somebody says, we're going to have a baby, and you go, oh, what is it? Hey, guess what they're having? They're having a little boy. And so this October, little Samuel will be born. Now here, let me explain something. Man, I'm telling you, my, our granddaughters are dolls. They are absolute dolls. I'm sorry for yours. <laughs> but you know what they're not? You know what they can't be? They can't be our hope for the future. And when that boy is born with the last name Gip, that's going to carry that name. That's what Isaac was. Isaac was the child of promise. Isaac was the hope of the future. But I got news for you. Forget either one of those. The book says he loved him. You know, isn't it, isn't it sad? I am so sad that, <clears throat> that we claim that the world is bad. Isn't that right? And believe everything it tells us. There are people in here, you still think dad is the ogre. You still think, you know, dad is supposed to have a good father-son relationship, you know, and, and the kid grows up bad. Well, my dad didn't love me. Your dad had good taste. <laughs> my dad didn't love me. He really didn't. He didn't want me. They almost adopted me out when I was a child. They, they didn't want me. I, you know why? Because I was born two years after their last child. There's some of you going, well, what does that mean? Those are the teenagers. In 1950, I am what was known as a surprise. Today, I would be known as an abortion. Now, really, think of those two words. Isn't surprise nicer? I mean, has anybody ever walked into a darkened house? All of a sudden, the lights came on. People jumped out with balloons in the air and went, abortion! <clears throat> you got to admit that surprise is a better word. And, um, but here I am. And my dad didn't love me. He didn't love me. He really didn't. But that's okay. He was a good man. I loved him, brother. I loved, I didn't, I not, didn't just love him the day he died. I love him today. I'd fight you today if you said something bad about my dad because he is a good man. And he didn't love me because he had good taste. Really, that was it. But, but Abraham loved Isaac. Can you imagine that? He really loved this kid. He liked being around him. He'd look at that kid and he'd go, man. You know what I did? Oh, with, because my dad didn't love me. You know, look, you're going to do what you want. If your dad didn't love you, you're going to go rob a liquor store. And when they arrest you, you're going to say it's because your dad didn't love you. 
Or you're going to tell your own kids every day that you love them. And somebody says, why do you make such a 